just uh, Saturday was the first game this year. Didn't give up a sack. Just what was? What do you think of the performance of the line? Well, yes, it's great not to give up a sack. And I felt like there was uh, other games that there shouldn't have been sacks, mm -hmm. and that's the expectation every game. I think that the, when you talk about sacks, it's it's more than the old line. I thought there were some right. really good moments in protection. There's moments that the quarterback makes a guy miss. There's moments that the running back does a great job or the tight end, whatever it may be. So it's definitely a team thing. It's also about guys getting open and getting the ball out quick too. So it all ties together. So obviously we can keep him clean. That's the number one goal. Sheridan talked on Monday about in the running game that a lot of it is not necessarily the running backs, but starts up front. Just kind of what have you seen running with the running backs more, not Jalen. Kind of what have you seen with the consistency in the run blocking? Yeah. I, Man, it's always we're striving to get better every day. You know, there's some really good things that are happening out there, but then there's things that need to be better. And so that's really what we're trying to do. We have not played a perfect game, not even close, and that's what we're trying to get to. You know, we definitely want to get our backs going. You know, sometimes, you know, we got a lot of plays that are, are the quarterback making decision who gets the ball based off the defense, and that's what happens at times. But we got two great running backs. We got tight ends that can block, so we can definitely have an effective running game. I think uh, there's a time where Caden Brock had two guys coming at him and he kind of stopped both of them. Uh, what does that speak to about what he's doing for you guys? Well, that was a big one, you know. They had more than we can block. Quarterback knew it. You know, he felt like he could move a little bit away and get it out quickly, and Proctor did a tremendous job of taking two. You know, in those situations, it's like, hey, you got to block yours, and then if you can just take the hit off with the other one that you're trying to do, and he really slowed them both down. So, you know, what it says is that he's locked in. He understood the protection. He understood the situation. And, and he did what he can do. And he was able to slow, slow down two guys. Well, it's one thing to know what to do or what he should do, but not to pull it off. Right. I mean, how, how quickly, just because he, he did have kind of, or he had to miss some time early, how quickly did you just come to back in, in your things? Yeah, like I said, I thought he really improved throughout the summer and camp and his protection. There was a few things that I saw that he needed to fix, and he's really worked hard at it, and you can see it's starting to pay off. And so, you know, he, even though he was, he was injured, he still was doing things during those two weeks. And once he jumped in, I, I'll be honest, I was surprised there wasn't more rust on him in the first game at Wisconsin. He really did a nice job. What's it been like having kind of the full group now through two games? Well, it's always great to have all your guys. You know, it's, it's, it's hard to uh, have enough depth to go through a season in the SEC, you know, and, and the season that's going along. So getting all those guys back is huge. And then it's, it's continuing to, to develop the guys behind them so we can have those guys ready to rotate in and play. So, But it's always nice to have those guys to start the game with. What's impressed you the most about the way Parker's played through the first four games? You know, it starts with him getting us in the right places. You know, just ID in fronts and the schemes. I think he's done a really good job. Because we've seen a lot of stuff these first uh, three weeks, you know, or four weeks, excuse me. There's been a lot of different defenses and looks. There's a lot of pressure on him to make the right calls to get us all in the same direction. I did a great job there. He's a tremendous athlete. You know, he's he's probably one of the most athletic guys. Him and Jonathan Cooper was the seventh pick in the first round, the most athletic guys I've ever coached. And he's a competitor. And he's a lot stronger than you think he is just looking at his size. And so he's able to get in there and, and, and do really do a good job. What, what, is, what all is he responsible for play to play? Well, there's a lot of things. There's, there's, in the um, some some schemes, he's got to ID the Mike backer for us. Uh, protectionally, there's three or four calls he has to make to tell us who we're blocking, and it's on him to do that. Um, and then in the run game, sometimes we got to push spots, we got to re-ID mics. You know, they're stemming. Everybody we play stems is something new. You know, a lot of people don't really understand. Like, you can have one guy move and change the whole scheme, but when the whole defense moves, we got to be locked in and ready to go. And he does a great job with that. He catches a lot of people by surprise. Maybe, maybe not now, but what was your first uh, impression of him when you first got him? Uh, I guess this spring. Well, I recruited him out of high school, so I knew him and his family. I was one of the dumb guys was worried if he was going to be big enough and, and didn't really go full full throttle at the end. And and then you're watching the national championship game. He's in there playing at 270. So now he's 290. And so I always knew what the athlete he, he was. I guess just seeing the competitor he is and really how strong he is for his size, you know. But but I always really liked him, the kid and the family, and kind of knew he was a special kid. So and that's all coming to fruition. I just was smart enough to try to pursue it at that time. The, the added weight that he's put on, where do you see that stick out? I think it's just more about some of it's the wear and tear of the game, and some of it's just being able to anchor in there. You know, when you're blocking 330, 340 pound guys inside, they're not 
pushing you in the backfield or when they're trying to pull and snatch you, you know, he's not flying around out there. He's able to anchor down. I think that's where you really, really see it. And then you see some really does a nice job of his double teams and get movement. So, you know, all of, all of that helps and you can see him kind of growing with that. How impressive is what he's been able to do? I mean, just given everything he went through in the spring before he really got settled in. Well, I guess for me, I'm, you know, when he was practicing or I know what he's capable of, I guess I'm not surprised because that's my expectation for him. And, and all the stuff that we talked about, spring and all that, really it was, it was just a tiny bump in the road, yeah. you know, from, from the end of spring through the summer, he's been locked in and doing a great job. So it might be surprising more people, but it's not surprising me because I know what he's capable of. Obviously, seen the rat traps around the facility this week. Guys talking about avoiding letdown. Just kind of what have you seen from the intensity this week facing Vanderbilt after such a big game on Saturday? Yeah, you know everybody talks about that. There's uh, the relief syndrome, all the things that come with it, and you know us as coaches have been through this. Like we explained to them, and they understand this. The whole reason everybody loves college football isn't because the favorite team wins every game, right? Everybody loves the upset. It happens all the time. It's happened to me as a coach. You know, it was just a few years back where. We're, we beat uh, Michigan, we're both undefeated, huge game. We're number three in the country and we're going to Purdue, who's 500, and, and we lay an egg and lose the game. They're storming the field. So we talk about it as coaches, but they got to play and they got to understand it. So I've seen good preparation this week. The older guys understand what it takes. And, and you know, you can't stress it enough, but that's where when you have maturity and leadership, they're able to handle those things. What stands out about Vanderbilt's defense when you watch them? You know, obviously, they're, they're very disciplined in their scheme and they're well coached. Like, you can see and understand everybody's fitting where they're supposed to go, whether it's whether it's a base defense, whether it's a stunt, whether it's a blitz, right? So they're playing, and, and they play hard. They run to the ball, and that's the thing in football. If you can get 11 guys to play hard every snap, you always got a chance. You know, when you see what they did on the road in Missouri and double overtime and easily could have won that game, Right, it, they beat VT that first game, so they're 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 a very good team. They're going to play hard. They've got two weeks to prepare for us, so they're going to have something ready for us that we probably haven't even seen yet. So we got to be ready to make great adjustments against them. You mentioned knowing Parker's family. What was your first, uh, I guess, conversation with Mark Martinez, uh, knowing that you were going to get him? What was that phone call like? Again? Well, you know, Mark was his coach, and I've known Mark forever, and we've always stayed in touch. So. It's funny, when I took the job and it broke that morning and I was on the plane over here, um, Parker's dad was one of the first guys to text me, you know, and then and then Coach Martinez hit me up later that day. So it's always good when, you, when you're coming into a new room and you actually have some familiarity with some of the kids. So there's a comfort level, not only for me, but for them as well. You know, everybody's like, who's this guy coming in here? And they kind of knew me a little bit, so that helped a little bit. Yeah, I was going to ask, did that kind of help the bond between you guys? Because I know he was really close to Huff and that was yeah. part of the whole... I think it does help. You know, you still got to create that relationship, but at least I'm not a complete stranger, right? They kind of know me, they kind of know who I am. He's got a coach that's known me for years. He loves his coach. I have a great relationship with his coach. All that stuff helps. Last two. JC Latham, uh, obviously was here last year, you didn't coach him, but uh, I think it was Q Robinson who said that Caden's becoming uh, JC 2.0. I mean, I don't know how much you know about JC's play, but I guess what, what similarities do you see there? Well, I, I've seen a lot of film on JC just from the crossover stuff, and obviously he's a tremendous player. I've met him a few times with top ball, that stuff, like, love the guy. And, you know, you, you again, with Proctor, there's not many humans walking this earth as big as him that can move like him. I mean, it's, it's I don't know, man, I, I've never seen it. And so, and you see, like, he, he wants to get better. He works every day. He asks questions. He's, he's, you know, he's taking coaching and you see his technique getting him better. And so I really love the trajectory he's on. And, and man, the sky's the limit for that guy. Book talked about the uh, knockdown competition. He said he won the first three weeks. Was that your idea? Tell me a little bit about that. And then who won last week? Something I've always done. It's funny, I don't know, maybe 12 years ago, 15 years ago, I just, we, you always keep track of it and talk about it. But once I put a board up on the wall where I write it down every week, and I might have a special reward for a guy that week, it's amazing how much more competitive it is. So if you got to pride yourself when you walk in that room and people are looking at those numbers, right, you want to have high numbers. So it, it, it's just something that, you know, 
we want our guys to play hard and play with an edge, and then there's a competition amongst them. And so, actually, uh, Jaden Roberts won it this past week. Okay. What kind of rewards? Or what's kind of on the line? Yeah, there's, there's some things that, you know, I got a couple of nice chains I made for the guys and stuff. And so, you know, they like to wear those things. And it's probably above all else, it's not the reward, it's the pride factor. Sure. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.